Welcome to Anime Out of Context, a comedy review show where a man completely immersed in anime culture torments his co-host, who is only allowed to watch the shows featured here. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash animeoutofcontext. Alongside over 100 hours of exclusive bonus material, all episodes uploaded to Patreon are completely ad-free, even to non-patrons. Thank you for listening, and enjoy. Hello and welcome to Anime Out of Context. The show where I attempt to explain the sometimes weird, sometimes wonderful, but always hilarious world of anime. And I spiral down into all the zombies and distractions. I'm Sean Rollins. I'm Remington Chase. That was very cute, actually. <laughs> <laughs> like that, that, actually, that, that actually made me feel good about my title. Thank you. <laughs> uh, for those who don't know, uh, we made yeah. an RPG for one of our pre-banters. Uh, go check it out on our Patreon if you're interested. Yeah, um, it's real cool. Yeah. Uh, are they the best things ever? Probably not. Uh, but did we have a bit of fun making them? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but we're not here to talk about RPGs, Remington. Or are we? Oh. We're not. We're not. Uh, oh, okay. We're, See, we're I here got, to talk I about anime. Excited. I was like, all right, are we gonna, is there like a, a Dungeons and Dragons themed anime? That'd be wild. I mean, we have done a lot of both vi- like fantasy and video game style uh, shows lately. So like, yeah, in but a way, I, we- I want something where it's like, Instead of like, oh, these characters, they're gamers. It's like these characters, they're in like a role playing club. Oh, so and, uh, like and then a legitimate. You'd be able to like, you'd be able to cut back and forth from like their role play world to their actual world, right? Um, that'd be dope. That'd be dope. It'd be so easy to do because you'd be able to tell two stories simultaneously, right? That interweave. You'd be able to be like, oh, this cool little fantasy story. And then you'd also be able to just be like, this cool slice of life interpersonal drama story. That'd be cool. Hop on it, anime creators. I mean, hey, I'm down for it. I've seen a lot of, like, web series do that, and it's fantastic. So I'm all for more tabletop RPG-themed content. And I mean, hell, just look at the fucking uh, Critical Role animated series. Like, it doesn't do that exact thing, but, like, it... It's one of those shows that feels like a tabletop RPG, and I love that, yeah, that feeling yeah. and aesthetic. Uh, that'd be great. Uh, no, no, but we're nowhere near. That's nowhere near what we're going to be talking <laughs> shame, about today. Shame. Yeah, like you, you'd think that with the pre-banter, I would have like tried to find something close to that. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're just miles away, actually. Miles away. Fucking miles away. The only thing in common is that uh, one of my potential themings for my RPG fits in really fucking well with the anime we're talking about today, but not the one I actually made the RPG on. Like, that's about as close as we get. All right, so what are we covering this week? Well, Remington, we're covering something that uh, you have spurned on multiple occasions. Oh, Uh, no. Not because because of any malice or anything. Just because every time I've given it to you as an option for a choice, uh, you just were... (laughs) Your your curiosity was piqued by another one. Fair, fair. Uh, And I figured, well... I needed something easy and straightforward to help us de-stress from the stresses of spending a month, you know, co-writing RPGs and things like that, that I figured it'd be nice to get something nice and easy and lighthearted out of the way, especially since last week we covered something that I would call the opposite of lighthearted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, it was pretty heavy in a lot of ways, and, you know... It had, light- it had lighthearted moments. Oh, yeah, loads of them. But you can't really call an anime with face ripping a lighthearted show. Yeah. All right. So this one doesn't have face ripping, or at least not a lot of it. Uh, not in the first season, at least. <laughs> not in the first season. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. The second season could be fair game. I do not know. <laughs> I mean, anything can happen. We, we, we've we all been Madoka Magica. We know how these things go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's See, never. That, it'd, be, <laughs> it'd be a bold move for a season two Madoka Magica. Right. Season cause... one, play it straight. Season two, episode one or two, got him. <laughs> It would be a hell of an investment, especially considering that this is a, a slice of life romance we're going to be talking about. All right, slice of life romance. Yeah, tell me, Rem, do you remember the title uh, Skip to Loafer? No, that's your Not silence. Really. Is, your silence <laughs> really. is deafening. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah the, the direct translation is uh, Skip and Loafer. You know, Skip to Loafer. Yeah, skip yeah, yeah, and yeah. Loafer. yeah, yeah, yeah. That, the, classic, the classic romance titling. Except, like, it's not the characters' names, which I think is a nice change of pace. Right? Okay, uh, one one of them wears loafers, and the other one skips around. Kind of, actually. How does he do it? <laughs> <laughs> you nailed it. Nailed it in one. We don't, you know what? Part one done. Let's just go watch it. 
That's it. We're good. <laughs> Solid. That's all I need to know. That's all uh, I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, in actuality, uh, it's a very simple, straightforward show about uh, our two main characters, uh, Mitsumi Iwakura and Sosuke Shima. All right. All right. Uh, and it more or less cent- is centered around Mitsumi. Uh, she is a, a young lady from the countryside, and she essentially has worked her butt off to go to a prestigious Tokyo school in order to get the best education she can in order to uh, get into, uh, believe it or not, politics. <laughs> okay. In order to uh, improve life for uh, her country town, right? Because, you know, that's the, that's the nature of some of these, like, outskirts towns is uh, after a while, uh, pe- if you don't have people coming to visit, you know, you run out of resources, the economy is in shambles. Essentially, she wants to uh, risk everything to go to school in Tokyo and improve herself so that she can give back to her community and improve life around her. That's like her that's her main goal of going to Tokyo. Uh, And she is uh, wildly confident that everything is going to go great and perfectly. Uh, (laughs) However, however, she is a bit of a country bumpkin airhead. You know, you know how (laughs) it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like. If you if you live in one part of the country and then you move to like the exact opposite part of the country, there's going to be a bit of a social disconnect. Sure. And the story is just essentially her moving uh, to Tokyo, uh, interacting with the people around, learning how to interact with them, as well as uh, developing a relationship with um, with Sosuke, who is essentially like the what could very easily be described as like the the quiet pretty boy that everybody desires but is a bit more aloof and uninterested in them in general but of course he takes an interest in her because she's a bit of a uh she's a bit of an a bit of an oddball you know you know All how right. these yeah, shoujo pr- stories pr- yeah go. pretty pretty familiar ingredients so far yeah uh and the question is remington whether or not these familiar ingredients uh make a lovely simple dish that you can enjoy or if it's just you know some easy consuming affair that will make people you know relax on a saturday night sure sure I, I mean, it has potential, basically, it all, with, with a, a simple premise and with this genre, it, it just comes down to, does it have solid, like, writing and characters? Mm-hmm. Uh, and that is what it all hinges upon. Yep. And that is what we're here to discuss. And there's not really much else to go in it. Oh, I will tell you one thing, Rem. Oh? There is occasionally a cute dog. Oh, fuck yeah. All right. Well, I mean, it, it, it's a good anime, then. <laughs> it's not the most frequent thing in the world but there is a cute dog it's a cute um, little uh, shiba so Inu. Hyped. fuck yes all right so i think without further ado let's go straight into it let's go watch some skip to loafer and we are back after watching five whole episodes of the spring 2023 anime skip to loafer or skip and loafer if you prefer and Remington, what are your thoughts? Was it a cute, fluffy little show like I promised, or are you gonna find some like deep-seated, like psychological problems with all the characters involved, and are just gonna absolutely destroy the show on principle alone? Uh, well, Sean, before we begin, I think it would be a fun exercise to uh to to uh, assign ourselves labels. <laughs> yes, because assigning labels has never been problematic behavior. <laughs> Uh, because uh, the vast majority of, of Skip and Loafer episodes follow the blank and blank uh, title format, right? Okay. Uh, and and we'll, we'll, we'll cover, like, why and, and how that's explored. But I, I just think it would be fun to assign which one of us is which for each one. All right? Oh, I see, I see. Which one of us is fidgeting and which one is wandering, Sean? Well, that's episode two, Rem. Well, yeah, episode one doesn't follow the format. Yeah, I mean, it does episode 12. It just doesn't have the, the and, but yeah, okay, fair Well, on. yeah, and thus it doesn't follow the format, God, son of see, a bitch. See, here's the thing, Rem, I fit both of those very clearly. <laughs> like, <laughs> my ADHD ass uh, paces more than anything, and you know how I am with things in my hands. Uh, like, I am quite Th- literally playing I, with something right now. So I, I guess you'll be fidgeting and I'll be wandering. Yeah, uh, I think, I Dreamy think and sparky. I feel like, hmm. I feel like you're sparkier <laughs> than me. Like, I feel like you've got more right. general spark. All right. And meanwhile, uh, back to the ADHD with you being dreamy. Yeah. Um, or perhaps just uh, real hunky. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, now we get to an interesting one: tingling and scraping. <laughs> mm. Well, I. <laughs> I, I think I'm tingling, I think you're scraping. Yeah, it does feel like I'm scraping by most of the time, so that does feel about right. <laughs> uh, prickly and giddy. Uh, rain makes you giddy, so I suppose I'm the prickly God, one in this rain. relationship. You're, you're my prickly little pair. Uh, drizzling and flickering. Uh, drizzle, uh, uh you're drizzling because yeah, of the rain. Yeah, yeah, fit that rain motif. Yep. And you're, you're flickering because you're holding on by thread. Uh... <laughs> This is a cry for help. If you're listening to this episode in particular, help me, please. Uh, hect- what about hectic and hot stuff? I think between the two of us, you are the hot stuff. All right, all right, I'll take it. So, and and that's not me being know, self-deprecating, but I, j- I just think you got, like, the hot stuff energy, you know what I mean? Hey, uh, heat and complications? I'm gonna be honest, Ram, I think you're the complications. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Uh, and you are the heat. Uh, drowsy and peppy. See, here's the problem. You and I both have sleeping disorders. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, but your yours is the drowsy sleeping disorder. Mine is the reverse fucked. Yeah. So I, I think you're drowsy. I think I'm peppy. Makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, two more. Scrambling and dripping. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we want to apply ourselves to either of these. Which one of us is dripping? Which one of us is absolutely moist and drenched? On? I think it has to be you if we're sticking with the rain motif. <laughs> <laughs> You're scrambling fitting with the panic motif. Correct, yes. Uh, and finally, hype and excitement. Two, two very similar but different words here. Yeah. Huh. I think uh, we, both of us could be excitement, but I think I am more hype uh, than you, both in the sense that, uh, but both in, in the self-deprecating sense of more hype than substance, and then in the less deprecating sense of, like, just, I, I think on the marketing front. Yes. Uh, like, and and so for that reason, I think I'm hype, you're excitement. Yeah. Because, I mean, a lot of the show is, you know, like, oh, gotta get to the hype of seeing what this non-weeb thinks about my favorite show. And I'm usually the one who's excited uh, talking about my favorite shows and getting great. And then I'm usually like brought brushingly low uh, if it's a particularly unfortunate episode. <laughs> but all right, oh, there all right. Uh, now that we've done that, let's actually talk about the anime. Shall yeah, we? you know, because th- that's why people come here. They don't. They don't want to see us do random personality tests. They would never <laughs> sit through content of us doing things like that. That'd be ridiculous. On a side note, hey, subscribe to the Patreon. Uh, we do pre banters every week. Anyway. <laughs> $2, that's all it takes. <laughs> $2 for a bunch of free content. Uh, well, I guess a bu- just a bunch of content. It's not free, it's $2. All right. Yeah. I mean, once you give Some... us the $2, it's free. But before that, it costs $2. <laughs> it's, it's, it's true. Yeah. Oh, all right. Uh, Sean, I think Skippin' Loafer is a fantastic show. Oh. I think it is one of, <laughs> possibly one of the best shows that you have presented to me. Um, and particularly what I think is so strong about it is how it is structured, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, because, like, looking back, I, I'm i trying to think, the last time we saw something this well-structured in a very different genre, mind you, might be Odd Taxi. I would need to double-check that claim, but that might be the case. It's a hell of a bold claim, too. It is, and I, I will explain... Uh, what I mean, uh, first we're going to talk about the structure of the first episode and what it accomplishes, and then we're, I, I want to talk about the structure of basically each other episode more or less together. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So Part of why we episode, did our little, our little bit of, you know, assigning us a label. Yeah, uh, and, and so for the first episode, right, uh, it, obviously this is meant to set the scene, mm-hmm. and... We, we start out by meeting uh, a couple of characters. We have uh, Mitsumi, which is the main character, right? Uh, she's, she's the star of the show. Mm-hmm. And she's uh, adorable. We see... <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, what, one thing I like about her is that she's... The, the art for her and the design is just like a normal girl. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not one of those cases where... And, and not the case where you see in so many anime where it's like, Oh, I'm a normal girl, not like all of these other beauties, and it's like drawn in the exact same style. So you're like, I, what? What are you talking about? It's <laughs> mm-hmm. you. You guys are equivalent. Uh, I I don't get it. Uh, but but she looks like ordinary. But uh, that's that's fine. That's great. Uh, 
she is chatting with her her friend uh uh Fumi and uh they they have just a lovely bond. Uh they they, they grew up together in a small town, right? And Mitsumi, she, she's going to the big city. Big city, because she's a, a kind of prodigy in her small town, but big fish, small pond. Yeah. And, and so she's excited to, to go to the big city, see what it's all about, to, to learn things, and, and genuinely to change the world. She has very high ambitions. She's, she's going to uh, succeed in school, get into politics, help Japan, and then come back home and help her town. And so she she does that. She says goodbye to her friends, right? And as, as she says goodbye to them and is, is going to go to her new school, we get brief glimpses of the rest of the ensemble cast that we have yet to meet uh, just getting ready, right? Just very brief glimpses, uh, just a very small montage, you know, a nice little almost foreshadowing, just being like, hey, here, here's some relevant people. You'll get to know them soon. Uh, we, we see how just utterly, like, confident Mitsumi is, which is uh, great. She is very self-assured. She's like, I am going to do all this dope shit. I'm going to do it. Uh, and and she's, she shows herself to be, like, intelligent and capable, but also ditzy and klutzy and not very well organized, right? Uh, basically, she has the tools to succeed very strongly in her small town, but it's a different ball game now, like, or, or it's it's the experience a lot of people get when they go to college for the first time, mm-hmm. where they're like, oh yeah, I was the smartest kid growing up, and then they go to college, they meet all these other extremely intelligent people, and they're like, oh shit. <laughs> Painfully relatable. Uh, Painfully relatable. <laughs> and so, uh, she she ends up getting a little bit lost, a little bit sick, uh, but that that's when we meet our second pr- main character, uh, Shima. Good old Shima, he is, he, he's a charming guy, right? Uh, everybody loves him. He's a little bit on, on the quieter, more mysterious end, where he, he doesn't have to say much to get you to like him, um, but he usually doesn't share a whole lot either. And so he, he sees Mitsumi, uh, he, he's running a little late as well, and he offers some assistance, and, and after that, uh, Mitsumi's like, all right, I, we need to get to school now. Uh, so she, she just books off running, she trips, falls, gets right back up, keeps going. Uh, and, and Shima is, is immediately charmed and impressed uh, by what he sees, right? Uh, just the stick to just the fact that you cannot keep this girl down, the fact that she is obviously having a real rough time uh, and is, is frazzled, but she keeps fighting. Uh, and, and, and so he, he runs with her. They arrive. Mitsumi's super out of breath. Uh, and as it turns out, uh, she gets to give uh give, give the little orientation speech for for freshmen, right? Uh, because she was she was top of her class. Uh, she forgot her speech in the bag, but she has it memorized, so she gives her speech. Uh, she's very frazzled while giving the speech, so while it sounds very good, she is staring into like the principal's eyes, unblinking this whole time instead of at the audience. <laughs> and, and it is like back to the so audience. So fucking funny. <laughs> Staring at him with death eyes as, uh, vocally, it, it's just a nice speech. Strong, solid speech. Uh, and then right afterwards, she goes and, uh, she throws up on a teacher, uh, because, you know, anxiety. Yep. But it's okay, because it's anime, so it's, like, pretty and sparkly. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty sparkly, Barf. Uh, <laughs> this immediately provides her the stigma of being the barfing girl, uh, because, yeah, giving a speech that people are like, oh, okay, and then doing that. Well, it's going to create some whiplash. Uh, Mitsubi is like, I want to make friends. That's going to be important here, right? Because she, she organizes things in her life that way. I, these are my goals. This is what I need to accomplish. Social life. We need to figure that out. Uh, but uh, so some people are, you know, reluctant to befriend Barfing Girl. Uh, Shima, meanwhile, he shows up. And a bunch of girls are into him. But he comes chats with Mitsumi. Uh, he, he, he already admired her. He doesn't care that she's barfing girl. And he kind of just like breaks the stigma once people see like, oh, I mean, if Shima is going to chat with her, I, I guess we can too. Uh, and so other people are more willing to, to chat. We also get introduced to, um, I believe her name is like Mika or Micah or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, she, she's kind of the mean girl bully, but with a lot more nuance to it, right? Um, where 
they actually develop her as a person and as a character. And while she is, she's, she's a little bit manipulative and a little bit mean girl, but she also has moments where she is genuinely supportive and helpful and kind. Um, you, you, you get both. You get both. And even uh, the, the more negative qualities are directly stemming from insecurities that, like, Mika is aware that she's insecure. She's aware, like, <laughs> she, she knows the development of herself. She's a, a self-aware pseudo-antagonist. Where, where she's like, this is why I am the way I am, and it's not great. It'd be awesome if I could be like y'all, being so authentic, but that's difficult for me. Uh, then, then we get a small little scene where, uh, j- just at the end of the day, where Mitsumi, she calls, uh, calls her best friend Fumi and, and check in with each other, right? And Mitsumi's like, hey, uh, take care of my siblings and my family and stuff. And, and so we get uh, just a brief moment where we see the best friend checking on Mitsumi's family and, and chatting. Uh, once again, it feels like the world exists beyond the protagonist because they're allowing these moments to happen. Obviously, we have a main character here. However, they are allowing themselves to explore these ensemble characters, their relationships, their moments that they have, which not only makes these ensemble characters stronger, but it also makes their bond with the protagonist stronger, and thus make the protagonist's character stronger. And plus, you get to see a cute dog in that scene. You do get to see a cute dog, uh, and we get to see a handful of others, and I love it. Yeah. Uh, basically, th- this brief moment, like, it, it is very small of the best friend Fumi checking in with Mitsumi's family, right? Even though that doesn't, that scene doesn't have Mitsumi, uh, it helps to build Mitsumi's character as well as Fumi and Mitsumi's relationship to such a strong degree. Because if we just got like, oh yeah, I'll check up on them and then we don't see that. Okay, cool. We, we understand their relationship, right? Um, and, and that's nice. But seeing that moment and seeing how uh, enmeshed this best friend is uh, to the family and, and how close they are, that also speaks to the closeness of Fumi and Mitsumi's relationship. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of time, but it adds a lot of development there. Uh, and, and then uh, we, we see some more with, like, Shima and, and him and his friends, uh, as well as just, like, uh, other other characters. Uh, we, we learned that, like, the next day there's going to be a little self-introductions, you know, hey, my name's Remington and I hate anime, blah, 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 <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Mitsumi is like, oh, I, I, should, I should think about what I'm going to say. Maybe I write down what I'm going to say. <laughs> and so she, she over-prepares her self-introductions uh, and, and will inevitably be uh, sleep-deprived. Uh, and so this is the first episode. Quite a bit happens in this first episode, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think structurally, it does so much right. First, it establishes where Mitsumi is coming from, where she's going. Uh, very much establishes her character, her desires. Uh, her faults, but also makes it so easy to root for her uh, because you see how hard she's trying and you see how har- how much she wants all of this and how enthusiastically she wants all of this. Uh, we, we meet a handful of other characters that are, are very quickly developed and often like added nuance to. Um, it shows us that the world is bigger than just the main character. And one thing I've complained about so many times on this podcast is when, in especially in a romance anime, right? You'll have the main characters, they'll meet up, and they'll they'll start hanging out. And then, like, in episode one, and then in, like, the second to last episode, the, the main character will talk about their best friend or something, and you'll be like, oh, yeah, they've just been sidelined this whole time. Are they really your best friend? <laughs> if, if they've just been ignored this whole time? That happens so much. That happens so much where... They're developing a show, and they're like, I don't know, nobody cares except, nobody matters except these two main characters, all right? Fuck them. Dylan just set off the smoke alarm. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we've seen so many anime that, that do that lazy probe, and it makes it less interesting, because now, okay, sure, the romance is in the focus, that relationship is in the focus, but you are limiting these characters' growth by limiting their connections external to the relationship. What is interesting about a a romance narrative is not just the characters being brought together, right? It's seeing a a little bit of their baggage, both good and bad, 
their histories coming together, their likes and dislikes coming together, their social networks and how those affect them coming together, right? There's so many different axes that can help to tell a compelling story. And if you just cut all of those off, you're doing yourself a disservice. Oh, I agree completely. And speaking of side characters, uh, I think there's a very interesting side character that I don't know if you've mentioned. Uh, but what do you think about Nao Chan? Uh, yeah, so Nao Chan, it's nice to have a, a supportive, like, parental figure. It is Mitsumi's aunt. Uh, and, and we haven't seen, like, a ton of her thus far. Mm -hmm. uh, other than to just genuinely provide strong foundations and, and a supportive, like, home base. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and hey, I vibe with that. Yeah, and uh, I think she is great representation as well. 100%. Yeah. Uh, and, and so what, one of my favorite things in, in episode one, right, is after, after showing up almost late, out of breath, throwing up on a teacher, uh, being a little bit awkward towards some people, uh, as, as Mitsumi is thinking back to all of this, uh, she just thinks to herself, my failures today don't count because it was my first day. And that's just <laughs> such a delightful sentiment. And one that I, I tried my best to live by and, like, encourage within others. Um, because so often we get in this state of mind where if we fuck up, right, then, uh, then we've ruined everything. Oh, no. And uh, that means we're bad and that we are a failure. And especially when trying something new, oh, no, no, no. You need to let yourself fuck up. You need to let yourself fail. In fact, you should ideally speed run that failure. The, the, the faster you fail, not deliberately, but just letting it inevitably happen, right? Um, you accept it, learn from it, move on. There's going to be a lot of those moments. They're going to come either way. Either you front load those sons of bitches, learn from them, and grow a lot faster, or you kind of just awkwardly place them haphazardly stretch them out over a longer period of time where then you'll grow way less fast and less significantly and you'll likely feel worse about yourself throughout the process. Uh, let yourself fail. Let yourself fuck up. If it's your first day on something, that's A-OK, -okay, all right? That's gonna be all right. Don't, don't expect yourself to be amazing day one. Uh, it, it, it'll rarely happen. And even if you're great day one, you're still gonna make mistakes. That's all right. That's okay. As long as you learn from them and as long as you aren't, like, carelessly making mistakes, you're good. Uh, so I just really like that sentiment. Ah, it's a good sentiment to have. Nice and motivating. So, yeah, o overall, uh, the first episode, it establishes multiple characters, multiple relationships, uh, especially, obviously, centered around our protagonist, uh, cr makes it wildly sympathetic, creates some major themes moving forward. Uh, it's great. It's a great first episode. And to uh, think, and then, you could have seen this a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> Should, and you're, the, you're the one in charge. Don't blame me. Hey, I gave you a choice and you chose differently. That's just how these <laughs> things go. And in fact, I think I had another episode where I gave you another choice and you still chose something different. So I, I think this like, it's the third time the charm is like, all right, I guess I just have to forcibly show it to him, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so each episode that follows it is more or less... Uh, you know, Sean, it's the good old Hegelian dialectic is what it is, uh, <laughs> where each episode will take a thesis, usually uh, Mitsumi is the thesis, and an antithesis being another character, and uh, through them will create some synthesis, all right? It, 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 it's beautiful, very philosophical, very delightful. Uh, more or less, it follows a pretty straightforward formula of Mitsumi and ensemble character, maybe one she's meeting for the first time, maybe one she's just getting a bit closer to, right? Um, they are going to bond over whatever the main plot of this episode is. Kind of, kind of like, it's it, it, it just like a very episodic uh, fashion where it's just like, here's the plot for this week. Here's the two characters. Here's the differences between them. And then them kind of like coming together and learning from each other. Which, I'm gonna level with you. That doesn't sound that incredible. Uh, being like, oh, hey, look at this extremely formulaic premise that, thus far, it has followed pretty strictly. I understand why you might be hesitant about that. But, what if I told you that it takes that formula, and while it doesn't necessarily subvert it, it maximizes the utility of it, right? 
I mean, if you got a good formula, you might as well use it to your utmost potential, right? Yeah. And if, if it was just the formula, as I stated, it would probably be, you know, uh, probably better for a younger audience. Uh, because that, that's, that tends to be what these kinds of plots are for, where it's just like, oh, two characters having a disagreement and then coming together, crazy. But this one, uh, it, it has Mitsumi fo- and a uh, focus on another character. So it helps to establish that other character. Perfect, all right, pretty solid goal so far. It also helps to develop Mitsumi further, both who she is and who she is becoming. Uh, the contrast of these characters uh, and how that builds everything and as well as builds their relationship together. Uh, cool. It, it accomplishes what the formula should accomplish. It also, you know, fun little side plots each episode. Cool. But then it goes above and beyond. Because most others, when following this formula, that would kind of be it. And yet every single episode also develops uh, develops the romance between Mitsumi and Shima, right? Uh, so even though, like, there's two characters at focus, Mitsumi and Shima are also always at some point touched upon. Uh, It develops the ensemble further. Even if it's not their special episode, you're going to see a lot of ensemble. You're going to see development from them. Uh, And and so what starts as a very simple formula that is constrained and only has a narrow focus ends up focusing on a little bit of everybody, all of their relationships with one another, how they engage with the world. You develop the romance and that relationship and that characterization further as well as all the benefits I've already listed. That's pretty substantial. And the fact that it's been able to do that literally every episode. I I talk a lot about it's not, it's less important to be slower pace or faster pace than to have efficient or inefficient storytelling, right? What are you doing with the time you are given? And this is extremely efficient storytelling. It takes a familiar formula, cool. And then it accomplishes so much more on top of that So each and every episode, in addition to being enjoyable, develops basically everything. Every episode pushes almost every important feature of this show a step forward. And that is insanely impressive to me. Honestly, I don't think I could have said it better myself, actually. And the other thing I I super enjoy about this show, Remington, is you, you think you would have had glimpses of all the characters in that first episode, but... As the show goes on, we still just keep getting introduced into new characters, and they're all kind of unique in their own little ways. Oh yeah, and, and sometimes it'll be like, oh, this character, they're going to be introduced, and here's the focus on them immediately so you understand them. Other times, it's like, oh, here's a brief introduction on them. You you'll, you get their point already, you get the gist of them, uh, but wait an episode or two and you'll learn a lot more about them. Yeah, I mean, it's not every day you get to meet a new character by uh, them walking in uh, with high heels that they are clearly not super accustomed to wearing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, w- once again, yeah, look, the representation of the show is pretty solid. Yeah. Uh, Though, to be <laughs> fair, so- all theater kids at some point in their life are like, I bet I It's just how it goes. <laughs> just how it goes. Just- <laughs> like, once, once you step into the theater sphere, you're just like, I wonder how that dress looks on me. <laughs> and so one of the things that helps with uh skip and loafer advancing all of its goals every single episode is because frankly it's well written all right it's well written the dialogue is solid it has an understanding of actual people i i will often critique like this is not how people actually engage with the world uh, i think skip and loafer does a good like optimistic a little bit idealistic view but a a also strongly grounded view of human nature like, for example, Mitsumi, she, day one, she barfs on a teacher, right? She also, uh, you know, isn't the most aware of people's interpersonal intentions. She has to try a little extra hard to understand them. And she doesn't have much of a filter. She's not trying to figure herself, like, all right, what's the best way to manage this uh, in every situation? Um, like, sometimes she will, but most times, it's just whatever she's thinking. She's very honest and authentic. And what that does is it it does genuinely create some, like, awkward moments. Some moments that are, like, a little bit embarrassing, a little bit awkward, um, that grate against the other characters a a bit. But at the same time, a lot of those moments are also found to be charming and, once again, authentic. And the other characters recognize that as well. And so it's like, okay, 
it, it's an awkward thing to do, but you're just so self-assured in yourself that it's not always a bad thing. And it recognizes the nuance of this where just, any other show would have had it one way or the other, right? Either you're seen as a social outcast or you're seen as so weird, quirky, and cool. This one is like, oh yeah, I mean, she sometimes like clumsily stumbles her way through social interactions and sometimes uh, sometimes when you go to karaoke, uh, she ends up playing like a song from a children's show or whatever, uh, which is a weird that nobody else is familiar with. Uh, those are weird choices, but she goes all in on it. So is it a little bit awkward? Does it break those social norms? Yeah, 100% acknowledged. Is it also nice and refreshing and charming in a lot of ways? Also, yes. And the characters recognize that. It's so nice to have these levels of nuance in dialogue, in relationships, in character development. Uh, it, it feels like the show isn't, like, trying to actively manipulate you at every turn. It's just trying to delve into all of the complexity of these characters. It's so good. It's so good. Honestly, I'm quite glad that you enjoy it. Because uh, when I originally had the episode with the three choices, I chose those three choices because I thought all three episodes were great in their respective genre. And, you know, I was going to be satisfied no matter which one you chose. And I think for that first episode, I think we did Dangers in, uh, Dangers in My Heart, which if you recall, that was the uh, little edgy boy uh, trying to come to terms with uh, his feelings for uh, another person while the premise was like, ah, he's an edgy boy who keeps thinking about murder. But in fact, he's, oh, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's just a kid. And the other option that we eventually covered as well was uh, Insomniacs After School. Oh, which, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which you also uh, praised quite well for what it was doing as a little romance story between two uh, characters and how they interacted. But as you can see, those these three different these three different romance stories in general are very different, but also do what they do very well. Oh, yeah, 100 uh, percent. Any anybody you recommended Skip and Loafer, which are endlessly numerous and, and who thought I would like it. Yep. 100 percent. Correct. Yeah. Gang, you got one right. You should feel great. <laughs> and I was hoping you'd like it too, Rem. But, you know, sometimes it's a gamble with you. Sometimes sometimes <laughs> I'll be like, ah, this is a great show. This is a wonderful show. There's no way you can dislike anything about it. And then you'll be like, so this is why capitalism is bad. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, hey, well, you know, some, some, some anime just deserve it. And, <laughs> but this one, <laughs> this one, solid, delightful. Um, it, it truly does just seem to succeed on all fronts, really. Like, mm -hmm. no significant critiques that I can think of right now. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I can think of is, uh, I think in episode three, they go to, they go to a Starbucks, and, you know, that's not exactly socially acceptable these days, but, you know. Excuse me, they go to a Star Max? <laughs> you remembered! <laughs> <That> fucking amateur. <laughs> I was wondering if you'd remember the name. <laughs> Huh? there's there's this great moment uh once again there's just so many understated moments that build up all the characters involved there's there's a moment where uh mitsumi and shima and and this girl this like awkward girl uh kurume they're, they're hanging out at star max right and they try to take a photo and it ends up being super blurry just super blurry and then shima just nonchalant is like all right perfect let's let's send this it'll it'll be funny to send this to our friend uh, send it to the friend, uh, and the friend just enjoys it and is like, oh, I wish I was there with you guys. And it's just such a stupid, silly, casual, friendly moment. And there's so many moments like that. So many moments like that. Like, oh, God, it, it, it's greatly structured. Oh, uh, yeah. No, like, it, it's just a, it's a human show. It's a human exactly. show, and that's part of the innate charm, right? Like, it's If, a if you're gonna give me... Uh, slice of life, coming of age, romance, all three of those genres, I need to see the humanity. And so thankfully, they knock that out of the park. And it's so difficult to, to create these brief, casual moments that have so much, so much impact in that humanity. Uh, but the, this one does it basically every episode. And it's nice too, because it's not like, there aren't any one-sided relationships. Yeah, it, it, there, it is a... It is a complex web, and each person, each person in each part of the relationship feels a certain way about the other, uh, and, and the 
formula of each episode allows those relationships to be explored, right? And so we could easily see a, a caricature of a mean girl with Mika, but in the episode uh, that focuses on her and Mitsumi, uh, we, we see a lot more about her. And sure, Mika is really into Shima, but at the same time, she isn't sure if she would be best for Shima, or even sure if, like, that's what she wants or what she wants, and the reasons why she wants what she wants. And Mitsumi is half aware, half oblivious to Mika's uh, ambivalence towards her, uh, but is still like, I, I really want you to help me out because you are, you're just like an honest and talented person, and I need that right now. Uh, and it's like, and then, of course, Mika has a, a reaction because Mika's very focused on aesthetics and appearances and, and all of that. And so it's just like a, a direct stab to the heart in, in the best way to have somebody so casually recognize you and not try to code it in any given way, right? There's no artifice there. There's no ulterior motives. It's just hey, this is how I view you, and this is why I made the decisions I did. It's like, oh, shit, that's, that's just honest. <laughs> it, I've noticed a trend in the past couple of episodes we've done. The more honest a show has been, the more you've been enjoying it. Of course! If, if a show is pretending to, to be something other than it is, or if it has characters who it's like, oh, yeah, this character is, is that way, uh, and, uh, but I'm not going to show you. I'm not ever going to demonstrate it. It's like, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Put your money where your mouth is. Have self-awareness of the story you're telling and of the characters you've created. God damn it. Oh my God. Well, I'm happy that you enjoyed it, Rem. Uh, do you have any guesses on what the mouse score for Skip and Loafer is? Oh, it's, I, uh, it, okay. Uh, I, I was vaguely familiar with the name, which indicates very popular. We, um, we do get a lot of email requests for it. Like, ever since I, we up, did that triple threat episode, yeah, it, it it's was... It's shown up multiple times, and yeah. so that indicates popular. It's insanely well done, so it should be highly rated. I It's 8.33. All right, is that your final answer? That's what I'm going to go with. I, okay. I, want it, I want it to be high. Well, uh, Rem, it's had a year to cook. In fact, hilariously, uh, I think... According to Mallet, uh, first aired in April 4th of 2023, so it has been a full year at this point. Hey, happy anniversary. Oh, yeah. And uh, with only 117,000 ratings, believe it or not. Needs uh, more. Need, hey, I, I concur. And maybe this will be the episode that gets people to go and uh, give, it a, give it a look. Give it a looky loop. Uh, Skip to Loafer is sitting nice and pretty at 8.13. Oh, it, it's underrated. It's underrated, guys. It's, yeah. And... Based on what a lot of the people are saying in their reviews, that seems to be the general consensus. Like, the amount of negative reviews for this show is so minimal. So beyond minimal. Like, every, anything, the highest quantity of quote-unquote low-rated scores for this show is 5s out of 10s, and that's only 1.3% of the whole voting. Everything below that is less than a full percent, and everything above that is uh, over 10% of it, essentially. Like. Vast majority, like 37% of voting for this show, give it an 8 out of 10. Hell yeah. And, like, people who watch it, love it. There, I haven't really seen any standout negative reviews, and I feel like any negative reviews or mixed reviews are coming from people who wanted something more specific than what they got, which is always a treacherous thing to do when you're uh, going into a new show. You gotta have some expectations, but you can't, like, you can't have, like, a clear-cut idea of exactly what you want the show to be. Because otherwise, you're probably going to be disappointed. Sometimes people let that. their headcanon get in the way of the actual product. Exactly, exactly. Though, I will say, if some of these side characters got together, wouldn't hate it. Wouldn't hate it. <laughs> I think it would be quite cute. <laughs> It'd be quite amusing. Well, I mean, I mean there, there's great relationships all throughout, so it, it's, it's very easy to ship. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, one person said that they're incredibly bored the whole show. I'm like, pardon? <laughs> I don't know, man. Go go watch Attack on Titan, I guess. And I mean that sincerely. <laughs> I, I, think that, I think that you just want visual action or something like that. Um, find any generic shonen. You'll probably be satisfied. 
Because Apparently they were upset clearly... that it wasn't romantic enough for them. Oh, God. Yeah. All right, so it, it's... The, yeah, if you're, like, extreme shoujo trash or extreme shonen trash, if, if you are, like, locked so firmly into those and you do not like anything else, okay, you probably won't like this. But I would argue that if you're in either of those categories, you like tropes more than you like stories, which you do you, but, like, also come on now. <laughs> <laughs> you got Not it. everybody needs to like it, like, right? Like, it, for some people, it just won't be their kind of thing. Uh, but specifically for those people that I'm calling out, uh, <laughs> I, 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 th- I think that's the issue. Oh, my goodness. You know what? Fair enough. Uh, yeah, I just looked through their list of things, and it's like, they have some takes that are like, okay, I kind of agree with that in terms of their scores, and others I'm just like, you know, I'm not sure, I, I don't think this was for you. I don't think this was, a sh- this was a show for you. Yeah. Yeah, no, they gave it a, they gave it a 6 out of 10, which is still positive, but like, it's wee braiding, so that's like, that's like a, a damnation, essentially. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> 6 out of 10, my Christ, you are an evil monster. And like, if you feel <laughs> just neutral about a show and give it a 5 out of 10, Clearly, it is the worst show you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but with that in mind, uh, Rem, I guess I need to ask, and I think I probably already know the answer if I had to guess. Any chance you'd want to watch more Skip and Loafer with me? Oh, of course. Yeah, I mean, it's one season right now, so it'd be pretty easy to finish, honestly. And if people want you to have good things in your life, they'll maybe request it again so that you can actually finish it and see if your opinion changes, gets better, gets worse, whatever. Hell yeah. But yeah. So with that in mind, thank you all so much for tuning in. We really appreciate it. If you enjoy Remington having nuanced, positive things to say about a cute little show from the previous year, then please head on over to wherever you get your podcasts and leave us a review. They mean the world to us, and we do read every single one. And if that is not enough for you, you can head on over to twitch.tv slash animeoutofcontext, where myself, Dylan, and Remington occasionally play video games very poorly, and I will say, damn you, Dylan, knocking on the door right when I'm doing my bit. I am upset. Uh, Dil- Dylan knocking on the door, causing the smoke alarm to go off. He, Come he's on, just man. been a menace this episode, I'll let me tell you. He ya. only hurts himself. Though I will say, he is probably doing it to offer me some tasty food that hopefully isn't horrifically burnt since because of the sm- smoke alarm. Why isn't he knocking on my door to offer me tasty food? You live very far away from us. Um, <laughs> I don't see why that has to be a reason. <laughs> The point being, uh, I am getting much better at regularly streaming. So far this month, I have streamed six times by the time this comes out. So, you know, I think that's... Imp- no, wait, more than six times. Yeah, no, more than Look six you times. go. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm practically a professional. We'll get him in a hot tub in no time. Yep. Well, you say that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, and if that is still not over uh, enough for you, you can head on over to patreon.com slash anime out of context, where you gain access to all kinds of lovely bonus material, including having the opportunity to be thanked live on the podcast. So, Rem, who are we thanking this week while I go address Dylan? <laughs> as always, we would like to send our guards to all of our bland bitch protagonists, as well as our magical girls, who we really appreciate. But moving on, we get to our yandere waifus. And on that list, uh, we yandere waifus who are, uh, you know, this week just being wholesome. Just being wholesome. And on that list, we have, my name is first, not bitch. Oops, sorry, I was just overly excited. You're not a bitch. Please don't hurt me. Zombie Stomp, Xanax, Yummy Yummy Cummy Cummy in my tummy Yummy Cummy. Yandere Neko, why show and why show? Who's the Esper who's the sex machine in all the Otome games? Misaka, you're damn right. Where's our DBZ review, you ginger fuck? Wes Kane, walk me home gently. Viva la Haruhi revolution, call the arms fellow worshippers of Haruhiism. Utah number one, unhinged tracks, tum yum cum, totally God's angel, Titan CNH. This show is a ploy to get Joe Biden reelected. The Susanator, the pocket big hole you need in your pocket. The flying spaghetti monster, the Danish Viking will conquer the world with Ronor Zoro as my navigator. Turban, Super Zoo, Stacy's mom. Spoon Man, ah ah ah, Fighter of the Knife Man, ah ah ah. Spoon Wife gave birth to a spork, staring Spoon Man's v- starting Spoon Man's villain arc. Someone asked me to name a greater philosopher than Nietzsche, I can't. Snakey Pie, Smoochies for the DM, please. Shrek is love, Shrek is life. <laughs> Shoujo Addict who doesn't need help, just more manga to read and anime to watch. Sean wants to give Spoon Man a thank and yank. Sean's spoon collection was robbed by a strangely fork looking man. He's coming, Sean. Your ladles are next. Sean's favorite website is Wikifeet. Sean told me to fuck my sister and now my family won't talk to me. Sean saying it's never gonna happen is just a cue to push harder. He'll break. Sean ruined my happy sugar life. And when he didn't sing for us like a coward, people demanded a diddy, Sean. Uh, Sean puts the bar in Capybara, the spoon man comes. Sean, if you make Rem play a pacifist or genocide route of Undertale for the podcast, I will send uh, you $100. And if you don't, 
and then it gets cut off. So we we don't know the second half of that threat. A very vague threat. So <laughs> for Remington to play a game he has already played. Yeah, <laughs> like I, I I've, I've completed the game, folks. Uh, Sean had a last that could go all night, but he got out of breath when he had to blow her up. Sean can do 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 these nuts. Shadow cryptid milf. Serve him the shark plushie. So go to guy. That's what she said. Say hi to that guy's fa- fiance. I think it's Haley. Ross Bomber, Riku the Dawn Hero. Rhiannon Williams, Renaissance Art is just hentai, hentai for snobs. Remington is right. Rem uses the drums of liberation to free all weeps from bad anime. Rem doesn't completely hate my favorite shows. Pro tips out of context, the next time someone tells you the government wouldn't do that, oh yes they would, they already have. Professor Fox, Paco Musico, No Waifu No Laifu, 907. Nick, Necrodancer 1415. My mother never hyphenated her last name, but if she had, her initials would be MILF. Musical episode guy here with Spoonman to say thanks for the second musical episode. Makeka 7 Hierto, Myrmicorn Fire, fake, making fake mile count so I can rate Forest Fairy 5 10 out of 10. Macaroni Uchiha, Link Joke Earl, Leave Insanity. Kylo, King Rich Rock, Cassidy, Just Watched SAO Alice Underworld Part 2 Episode 1, Yikes Doo 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 Doo. Jergidius, Jax, Jam Hands. In a 1v1, always bet on the capybara named Hakari. Icon Scout, I will never get more Ace of the Diamond, now I cry. I was hoping Rub would dislike even more than he did and validate my opinion. I tried manscaping with a straight edge razor. I can't believe I made an account for this. Uh, hey, Sh- that, that's the overwhelming sentiment, I think. Uh, oh, hey, yeah. Sean, can you cover a uh, love list for the cats? Hey, Sean, let's review Glitter Force next week. Gushing over Sean and Rem, not, g- not go watch the ma- Magical Girl version. I feel like I'm missing something there. Uh, there, there, there so- something was mistyped. Maybe now go watch? Uh, Probably. Glenn Michael Dolan, Ginger Weeb, Furble, Murble, Durble, Shablurble, uh, Farmer Weeb's Hot Take of the Week, Haikus Should Not Be Banned, Haley Lost to the Big Hole, Here Cometh Spoon Man. Really just getting all, all the references now in haiku form. Uh, uh, like, we are a cesspool of in-jokes now. <laughs> <laughs> Six years in, it's gonna happen. Fantide, Erica McCorkle, Danielle Riot, Daddy Rem, Tell Me a Bedtime Story, Country Fred Goth has emerged from her depression cocoon and decided to change her name. Cheese Monkey, Celestial Fox. Cat girls are best girls, so give them cute little paws. Castlevania, though, guys. Brock Hartford Geo dudes falling down the stairs and fucking my mom. Call that a Freudian slip. <laughs> Christ. Uh, Blake Star, Bird Bartholomew Flem, Bento Kato, a, a bi girl seeking tickets to Amfest. Been a while since I've changed my name on here, but I got a third, fourth point now. I can't believe it. And I'm also changing my major from funeral. Angel for a good cause. And every day that Raven comes to visit. Amazing Muffin, AJ Tunnels, Aisha Gudgie, Adele Girl, and Doc. Now we move on to the Boy Wizard tier. And what are they going to get this time, Sean? Ah, shit. Um, I forgot I had to do that. Um, <laughs> let's go with shoes. Everybody's gonna get some nice shoes, you know? All right. What stand is better, D for C or Filthy Axe at a reasonable price? Uh, you're going to get some ballet shoes. Vincent Calabrese. Ah, you seem like a clog kind of person. That mouse girl. You're going to get a steel-toed boot. Thank you all for tuning in. If you want to reach out, animeoutofcontext at gmail.com. Wait, is that a Patreon just plugging... <laughs> plugging, yeah, plugging communicating with us. Which we do at the end of the Patreon reads anyways. You know what? Yeah, but, sure. but you know, it's just, just another reminder that, hey, you can reach out. <laughs> yeah, no, I suppose so, I suppose so. You know what? A Nike Air Force. How about that? Tails Williams is looking, is looked after by Dr. Jones. <laughs> I don't know what this is, uh, but how do you feel about having a brothel creeper? <laughs> oh, God. Silent secondary. How about a chopping? Scourge, best 20 bucks spent to LMAO. Uh, some clear heels. Roska. A climbing shoe. Remington Chase's laugh is my favorite sound. You lucky dog, you get some Crocs. <laughs> <laughs> Redo of Healer or the Spoon Man was given time travel powers and it went exactly as you'd expect. How about some cycling shoes? Rare Kumiko thanks Sean for putting up with his antics. You need some class, have a dress shoe. Rare Kumiko thanks Dylan for all his hard work editing the podcast. How about some, uh, some driving moccasins? Rare Kumiko will continue to support the show with multiple accounts. Flip-flop time. Where Kumiko is now hoping for Sean to show Rem Hitori Bochi no Marumaru Sekaitsu. Still keeping up with all the multiple accounts, I see. Um, you're also going to get, uh, some high tops. Rare Kumiko. Mm, man. Mo- you're so greedy. So many shoes. Uh, yeah, it's so many shoes. <laughs> I have some hiking shoes as well. Uh, Nightshade Blade wants to gush over magical girls. How about some high heels? Net hier aber waren sie schon mal in Baden-Württemberg. Uh, how about a, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation of this, uh, hua, which is a, uh, traditional Korean boot. Huh. Monogatari is everything you guys said you like in an anime. This week they do some things very different way. How about some jazz shoes? You like jazz shoes? Mike! Uh, the picture of these is terrifying, uh, but how about some jelly shoes? 
<laughs> Miguel Delion. Have a kitten heel. Latino's 10th anime at age 12 was Love, Chernibia, and Other Delusions. This eye patch hides my true power, Sean Rollins. Uh, 2012. Uh, yeah, okay, I see what they're doing. All right. Uh, you get some light-up shoes to go with your edgy persona. <laughs> Kugor. Some loafers. It's just that spy guy. How about some... <laughs> some mucklucks. Drew, 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 you said my name thrice, so you doom. Uh, have some Okobo. Decade one of all father making Patreon accounts until Sean shows Remington Dragon Pilot. Can't wait for decade two when he makes his second. <laughs> uh, you're going to get some organ shoes. Crosskirk. You're just going to get some nice orthopedic footwear. Crimson Reapers, just because of the sides. An over-the-knee boot. Carver 271. Peep toe shoe. Blood cell here to remind you that white blood cells are inferior. You need the red ones to thank and yank anyways. Some platforms. Beethoven 1201. Uh, some racing flats. Anonymous. Rocker bottoms. Anime mashup of the week, mobile suit salary man. Cleats. And animated Z. Uh, those toe shoes. Dylan's worst nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> now we move on to the inappropriate Joey Wheeler tier. Where, one sec, can we make this work? Yeah, where you will be paired up and Sean will tell you what the episode title would be uh, following the skip and loafer standard. Uh, so, the first two that we're, we're pairing up together, we have, you know you're doing something right when Sean wax and smacks his bulbous salutation. Uh, and Swedish Weeb recommends Redo of Healer. All right, they've been paired up. What's the title of their episode, Sean? Uh, you've got Arousal and Denial. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, that that's just a solid title right there. Thank uh, <laughs> next... Our next pairing, we have Sean. We have recorded 306 episodes. Show me One Piece and Rowdyo. Uh, you get, um, investment to excitement. All right, all right. Uh, and last but not least, we have the pairing of my dear old mom and Blue Baron 15. Didn't expect you to be pairing off your mom like that. All right, listen to you, you cut. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, flight and fatherhood. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry about that. I couldn't <laughs> resist. God damn it. Thank you all for tuning in. If you want to reach out for a comment, question, feedback, or recommendation, you can tweet us at AnimeConPod on Twitter, or send an email over on to AnimeOutOfContext at gmail.com. Once again, guys, thank you all so much for tuning in. We love and appreciate you very, very much. And as always, don't fuck your sister. Do -do -do -do. Do, 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 do. I think the Attack on Titan is a fantastic show. Oh! I think it is one of, <laughs> possibly one of the best shows that you have presented to me. Um, and particularly what I think is so strong about it is how it is structured, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Because, like, looking back, I... I'm trying to think, the last time we saw something this well-structured, in a very different genre, mind you, might be Odd Taxi. I would need to double-check that claim, but that might be the case. It's a hell of a bold claim, too. It is. I wonder how that dress looks on me. Fucking amateur. Uh, let yourself fail. Let yourself fuck up. If it's your first day on something, that's A-OK, -okay, all right? That's gonna be all right. Don't don't expect yourself to be amazing day one. Uh, it, it, it'll rarely happen. And even if you're great day one, you're still gonna make mistakes. That's all right. That's okay. As long as you learn from them and as long as you aren't like carelessly making mistakes, you're good. You were like, God damn, I want that Judy Hops tail. And I was like, oh yeah, we can go to the gift shop. And you were like, what gift shop? And I was like, what?